Hi, I'm Lori McMortgage with Union Home Mortgage Company. And normally you're watching me talk about the exciting world of mortgage finance, but it's October, which is also National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I'm really lucky that right in my hometown is the headquarters for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Douglas File, the Chief Programs Officer with NBCF, is here to join us today to talk about what the National, what the National Breast Cancer Foundation does. Douglas, tell us about what you do. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. So excited to talk to you here today. And um, the National Breast Cancer Foundation was actually started in 1991 by a breast cancer sur survivor, Janelle Hale. So we're almost 30 years uh, in existence. Wow. Um, yeah, and our mission is to really help women now, help patients now that are affected by breast cancer and to inspire hope. And we do that through early detection, education, and support services. So we are focused on finding breast cancer early when it's easier to treat and to diagnose and to uh, go through treatment and survive. Um, it's very important to find it early. And we also want to educate the public about the importance of early detection. Many people across the United States don't know how important early detection is. They don't know when to screen, where to screen, how much does the screening cost, am I covered? These are all things that we try to educate about. Um, and we also want to support patients when they're going through treatment. If you are diagnosed with breast cancer, um, do you have the support and the care that you need to go through that. We really believe firmly that no person should go through breast cancer alone. So we really try to be there and be hope in that, in that time. Yes, well, hope is definitely a massive force. And as you were just kind of talking about screening, I found myself saying, oh yeah, I don't really know the answer to any of those questions about where to go and if it's covered and what it costs and whatnot. Um, and I was also just kind of thinking about, you know, everything in my mind filters through the mortgage world, right? So I'm thinking about, wow, I wonder how the cost is different for someone who maybe does the screening and catches it really early versus the person who didn't do regular screening. And by the time they found out, it was much later. Do you have some, some kind of facts or stats to share with us maybe about that? I know every person's case is a little different, but maybe yeah. just how screening can maybe save you money as well as saving your life. Well, absolutely. And that's why um, most insurances and um, really support screening. It's, it's so important to, to catch it early. I will say though, we, we hear this often, you know, sometimes people unfortunately are diagnosed late yeah. And that is, that's not necessarily their fault or it's, we, we, we really try to be careful, you know, not to put blame on people if they do find it late. For example, my mom was diagnosed with a late stage cancer. It wasn't that she didn't, she wasn't screened. It was just, that's where, how, how her cancer progressed. Right. Every cancer is different. And sometimes, you know, we've heard stories where people have had a pain in, in their hip or whatever, and they went in and that's how they found out they had cancer. I mean, they were doing the screenings, but it just, it's really what type of cancer, how aggressive it is. There's a lot of factors that go into that. So I will say though, early detection works. We know from, uh, from evidence since the early nineties, the mortality rate of breast cancer has declined every year. Um, so we're seeing these, uh, and we believe that's because screening programs started in the early 90s. That's when awareness started. That's when screening programs started across the country. That's when research and therapies really started taking off and targeted therapies um, became uh, part of the treatment, not just chemo and radiation. And so all of these things have, have helped improve uh, the mortality rate and have, have helped people live longer with breast cancer and survive. That's amazing. Yeah, so screening definitely goes hand in hand with, um, with a better outcome. I didn't realize that those two stats, um, you know, just really paralleled each other. So thank you for sharing that. Um, now I've heard that um, National Breast Cancer Foundation um, has these amazing hope kits. Tell us about yes. the hope kits. Yeah, when our hope kits are, we like to call them a tangible expression of hope. And it literally is a kit, it's a box 
And what we did a, a number of years ago, we, we were talking, we said, why don't we talk to breast cancer patients and just simply ask them, what helped you through treatment? What, what comforted you? What helped you with the side effects? What were some things that made you feel better, made you feel hopeful? And we did a survey of thousands of patients and they told us. And we took those answers and we literally put it in a box. So inside the Hope Kit, you'll find lotion, you'll find, um, the, I don't know what you call them, the little water bottles that measure your water intake. It's very okay. important to drink yeah. a specific amount of water when you're going through cancer treatment. Um, also a journal. We know that if you can journal your feelings and your emotions and really get those out in writing when you're going through treatment, your outcomes are better. Um, fuzzy socks, the world's softest socks are in there. Uh, yeah. And, and just little things like throat lozenges, uh, tea, tea that's, um, that's organic and, and healthy and will make you feel better if you're going through nausea. Um, so a number of things that are in there. We also have a uh, partner thrive cosmetics and they, uh, a lot of people feel when they're going through radiation, especially, or chemotherapy especially, um, if they lose their hair or if they, you know, um, they, they want to feel beautiful again. Wow. So, um, the cosmetics really come in handy. They're, they're all organic materials and they, they just make you feel, feel better. And so wow. these are all the things that we put in there. As you know, we use volunteers to pack each kit. Um, it's been really difficult with COVID, but we're hanging in there. <laughs> we're moving forward. Um, but we package kit with love. We put encouragement notes in there um, and we send them off. Um, and, and yeah, so it's been a great program. We've, we've had so much great feedback from patients. One of the things that's been a theme with the Hope Kits is we've distributed those across the country that we didn't really expect to hear. It was kind of a surprising thing to hear from people. Um, and they all said it. And they said this, when I got this kit, it made me feel, I was alone before I got this kit. When I received the kit, it made me feel connected to a bigger cause than just what I'm going through. Wow. And we heard that time and time again, that this was like a connecting point for them, that there was a bigger uh, cause mm -hmm. and that they were not alone. So remember I said our goal and what we really try to encourage patients that we work with is that you are not alone. You don't have to go through this alone. We're here for you. And sometimes that kid is literally, like I said earlier, a tangible expression of that. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I, um, I haven't ever had to personally overcome, you know, cancer or a medical battle. I have a 13 year old who's on the tail end of a severe knee injury. So she's been battling that for about a year coming back and being able to play again. And, um, I can imagine, you know, that, 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 uh, uplifting boost to the mental part of recovery yeah. is extremely valuable. Um, so, um, Wow, that's that's amazing. So, um, how does how can how can someone help with a hope kit or have one maybe sent to a loved one who yes. may be going through cancer, breast cancer? Um, how could someone like get involved with that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You can go on our website and you'll find our hope kits on there. It's it's really easy to find our nbcf.org website. But also, you know, to support other people, donate, absolutely. Um, we can use those funds to create more boxes and more kits to send out to people. We also partner with hospitals. Oh, so wow. like Parkland, Pres uh, Plano Presby here in Frisco as well. These are the local hospitals, but we partner with hospitals across the country. Wow. Um, we can get the kits to the hospitals as well so that when the patient is diagnosed, they will get a kit. Um, over 265,000 women are diagnosed each year of breast cancer. Actually, that's just patients, men and women. Uh, men also get breast cancer as well. Okay. But um, over, you know, almost 300,000 each year. And so we're giving away thousands of hope kits, but we need to get to that, that level where every single patient gets a kit. 
gets a box. And so the way to help us do that is absolutely to donate so that we can get those packed and get them sent out. Wow. So with that many people being diagnosed every year, chances are everybody that we know knows somebody who where breast cancer has touched their lives. So I'm glad for the work that you guys are doing. Um, and, you know, and I love your mission of helping women now, just meeting them where they are and helping them know that they're not alone. Um, but then also just the commitment to, you know, screening and, and, you know, getting ahead of it, being proactive is so important as well. So of course, like I mentioned, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So do you guys have anything special for October? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's been very busy. Uh, you know, October is a busy month for breast cancer, but it's actually August and September when we're planning everything. That's the busy moment for us. So we're in the middle of it right now, but it's been, it's been really great. And it's, uh, I will say, you know, with COVID, I think that's changed a lot for us. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that happened immediately uh, in March was, you know, hospitals were shutting down um, right. the screening programs. There was a study done at the end of May. Uh, breast cancer screenings were down 90% uh, in, wow. in May of last, or May of 2020. And it's gone up a little bit since then. We hope it's going to continue to go up. But that means, uh, honestly, there's probably millions, at least hundreds of thousands, but probably millions of women who are not being screened. And we're really concerned that, um, you know, if you skip a year, mm -hmm. you're going to come back and we're going to see in 2021, 2022, maybe some late, later stage breast cancers. We're very concerned about that. There's also a major backlog in the hospital systems mm -hmm. so they're having a hard time just even catching up from the cancellations from covid so we are really pushing hard in october to get that message back out to get your screening to not put it off right to, to, you know be safe wear masks we have a mask in our hope kit as well that we put in all the hope kits but uh we also have masks on our in our store um but yeah how to safely uh go to get screened in October, to not put it off. Um, and so our campaign in October is together. We're using the word together and we've turned it into three words to get her. Okay. And dot, 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 access to care, to get her a mammogram if she needs a mammogram. We fund free mammograms in hospitals across the country as well. Oh. Um, for those that are uninsured. Okay. Uh, get her hope, to get her... Um, the support that she needs to get her navigation if she needs uh to be navigated through breast cancer we also fund and support patient navigation programs in hospitals so um these are all things that we're trying to do in october we really want to get uh patients and women across america um the support and the help that they need um in in spite of uh covid and, and this pandemic that we're in yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And um, I know for a little bit, you know, um, medical services were limited, but I'm glad that, you know, screenings um, are open again and that, you know, now's definitely the time to do that. And you mentioned patient navigation. Yeah, um, yeah the insurance process, I bet, can be daunting and to have, have the support and partnership to, you know, have someone help you with that, I think is probably just as huge as receiving that hope kit in terms yes. of knowing that you're, you're not alone going through this. So um, now tell us about Game Pink. Yeah, Game Pink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a gamer, so I may mess up some of the, the <laughs> terms. But yes, Game Pink is another initiative that we have happening in October. October 3rd, actually, it launches. And you can go to GamePink.com. Okay. Um, it'll also be all over our website, but gamepink.com, you'll find all the information, the details. But on October 3rd, we're actually having a live gaming experience with gamers across America. Um, and I might butcher their names, but I know one, uh, Preston Plays is going to be there, Kelsey Dangerous, Booga, that's a big gamer, JD Weatherspoon, Courage, Porter Jade. Um, many other gamers are going to be playing live. Um, it's a live stream, and you'll get to see them um, 
playing and what game is it going to be? <laughs> That's a good question. I think uh, a lot of times they play Fortnite, I believe. Um, and so um, go to the website, you'll find out more information. Um, but we're really excited about Game Pink and it's all, it's going to launch on October 3rd, but we'll continue throughout the year. This is something that we're going to continue to support. Cool. Um, you mentioned earlier about um, people being affected by breast cancer and the gaming community as well. One of the things that we found in the gaming community is that many of the younger people and also some of the older gamers have been impacted by breast cancer, whether it's them personally or their parent. Um, that's one of the things that we can do in a, in a room sometimes, especially in a big room is say, you know, how many of you know somebody or somebody in your family has been diagnosed and without fail, everybody will raise their hand. And it's the same in the gaming community. Many of them have a, a passion for uh, helping people through breast cancer because they've experienced it in their own families. So we're really excited to be in this community. Um, I think some of the Samsung, Xbox, these are some of the sponsors. Twitch, Streamlabs, and Tiltify are also um, going to be involved. So it's going to be a big event. We're really excited. Wow. So this is a fundraiser then, and that goes yep. back to fund the screenings yep. and the patient navigation yep. and the hope kits and Absolutely. what you guys do. That's amazing. Well, you know, everybody has a mom or a sister or cousin, yep. you know, um, uh, everybody has women in their lives and, and men, you'd mentioned to get breast cancer. And so yep. um, it is unfortunately, you know, a universal, um, a universal condition that we've all you know has touched all of us in some way so that is i love that um how creative that is especially you know i know this isn't the first year that y'all have done the game pink right. um, program and um but how wonderful that you already had that in place in yes. a year where you know you can't really have the big runs and you know um events that sometimes bring in those sponsor dollars and awareness and things like that. So this was, um, you know, very, you were very on the cut, much on the cutting edge of getting ahead and bringing in, you know, a virtual way, um, you know, to have people be able to feel like they're getting involved and help raise money and support a really great cause. And, and honestly, it kind of happened organically. I wouldn't say we necessarily sought that out. It's just that we noticed that, so many gamers were doing uh, fundraisers on their own for us because they really cared about the cause. Yeah. Really cared about the cause. And they wanted to do something and they wanted to make a change. And they were kind of all sp uh, spread out across the country doing it on their own. And we started seeing that. We're kind of data people in our office. And so we started seeing, wait, this person's doing a huge fundraiser in Florida. This one's in California. What if we brought these all together and we we brought them under one umbrella and that's really kind of how it happened and it just took off from there and um i think that's what's so great is that we didn't have to seek it out it kind of came to us and we were just able to sort of organize it and put it all together yeah to facilitate the partnership and i know that that's probably you know really exponentially helped these people expand their influence yeah. to help you yes and it's grown grown the um, the opportunities. So that's really cool. I, I didn't realize that that was already happening um, yeah. individually. So that is, that's really cool. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking some time to talk to us about what National Breast Cancer Foundation does. Um, like I said, I just really love your mission of helping women now. Um, the hope kits literally made me tear up and I can't wipe my eyes because I don't wear my mascara to run. But, um, but I just love the impact that that's making in people's lives. So, um, you know, when something like breast cancer strikes, it's unannounced, sometimes that creates a financial burden. And um, so look for my next couple of videos. We're going to be talking about um, medical debt and expenses and how that may um, work hand in hand with the loan process. I've had some recent clients that needed to buy or refinance um, 
to you know kind of navigate this so look for my upcoming videos but we wanted to just really highlight the national breast cancer foundation this month in october how they are offering resources to help people right now and also to help with prevention um douglas thank you again for being on today and sharing everything um we can learn more about the resources you offer um game pink the store, Hope Kits, everything, you can visit nbcf.org as yes. your launching pad. And then, of course, there's gamepink.com. Um, so I am excited to um, take a look at Game Pink. I went to the very first one, which was in person, uh, mm. right here in Frisco, and it was pretty amazing. So um, I'll be looking forward to um, logging on to that online, see which player I want to uh, follow and support <laughs> <laughs> and raise money for a good cause. So yeah. thank you again, um, you. Douglas, for coming on. We just are, we value you as, you know, just uh, in our community and just what you're able to do across the U.S. Thank you for having me and thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.